coming up on BCN Today. 12 local entrepreneurs are recognized for outstanding achievement in Lethbridge. Plus, it's more work for less pay for the province's licensed practical nurses. And we head inside the Lethbridge Fire Department to learn more about some of the training firefighters go through. Your Canada. Your Southern Alberta. Your stories. From our studios in the heart of Lethbridge, it's BCN Today with Jeanette Roche. Hello and thanks for joining us on this Friday. The Lethbridge Chamber of Commerce held their annual Business of the Year Awards Banquet last night. Every year the Chamber recognizes the contributions of outstanding businesses, entrepreneurs and professionals to the Lethbridge business community. There were 12 different categories including the Top Business of the Year and Best New Business. The entrepreneurs were also recognized for environmental stewardship, indigenous engagement, and excellent customer service. We're celebrating our 130th year in Lethbridge, and it's just it's a special evening to recognize those businesses that are really going the extra mile and really making Lethbridge proud. We had over 80 businesses nominated for awards. So uh, most of them are able, are here and are present. And then we have, of course, our long-term members that, you know, just truly believe in, in our community and supporting the Chamber. Under 40 Award was also given out, and it went to Sydney Wakarook, who is the Alumni Relations Coordinator at Lethbridge College. The Alberta Union of Provincial Employees is concerned by the UCP government's decision to broaden the scope of practice for licensed practical nurses across the province. A UPE vice, president's, vice president rather, and LPN Susan Slade says that with this announcement, the government is asking LPNs to do more with less. But she says these frontline workers are already stretched thin and that increasing their workload without any promise to increase staffing levels are not good for workers or healthcare delivery in Alberta. Hundreds of AUPE members and supporters plan to hold a rally at the Alberta Legislature tonight from 5 till 6 p.m. to fight back against Jason Kenney's cutbacks to public services. They say that Alberta is bracing for a budget based on the recommendations of the government's McKinnon report, which recommends massive cuts to spending and legislating rollbacks in wages and benefits for public sector employees. This report followed the government's passage of Bill 9, which according to AUPE, ripped up legally binding contracts and violated the Charter Protected Rights of Workers. Well, the legislature is a busy place today. Swedish climate campaigner uh, Greta Thunberg is in Edmonton today, where the 16-year-old will join a march from a downtown park to a climate rally at the Alberta legislature. The teen has been making international headlines for criticizing world leaders whom she accuses of letting down youth by doing too little to tack it, tackle climate change. A group of Alberta oil and gas supporters called Uni United We Roll will hold a counter protest at the same time. Police raided a house in Lethbridge on 43rd Street South early Thursday. Evidence was collected from a home. Lethbridge police are not able to disclose what was taken, but officers say the search is in connection with an incident which took place on Wednesday evening at Super Lodge Hotel when a 28-year-old man had been robbed at gunpoint. The victim reported that two men, one armed with a handgun, entered the room and demanded money and property. A duffel bag containing a wallet, a phone, clothing, and vaping products was taken before the men fled in a vehicle. The suspect vehicle was later located um, at the residence along the 4,000 block of 43rd Street South and was later seen leaving the area. Police followed it to the exhibition park grounds and arrested two men and three women. During a search, one of the men was found in possession of the property that was belonging to the robbery victim. On Thursday morning, a search warrant was obtained for the home to search for weapons. Uh, yesterday evening, we responded to a report of a robbery, um, personal robbery with some weapons involved at a separate location. It was actually at one of our local uh, motels. Uh, Follow-up to that investigation. 
identified some suspects um, and as we followed our leads that led us to uh, residence here where we just executed a search warrant um, searching for evidence in relation to that robbery offense. LPS says that several people are in custody and are being questioned. The names of those involved have not yet been released. Police in Medicine Hat raided two homes and seized 347 grams of cocaine, over $37,000 in cash, and weapons including knives and brass knuckles. 34-year-old Shane Peters faces a long list of charges, including possession of drugs for the purpose of trafficking, possession of a prohibited weapon, and breach of a court order. It's been a year since cannabis was made legal in Canada, but when it comes to drug-related charges behind the wheel, Lethbridge police say this is difficult to determine how many offenses there have actually been. A lot of our tests for the drug exams on a suspected impaired driver by drug, they're still being analyzed by the lab. It takes a long time to get those back. So some of those I don't have the uh, answers for, but what I can tell you is we've had about 14 uh, exams in the last year. So just over one a month that is drug impaired driving related. Obviously we still have uh, a lot of alcohol related uh, impaired driving as well. As of yesterday, it's now legal to purchase, sell, and produce edibles, extracts, and tropical cannabis products. The Lethbridge Fire and Emergency Services held their fire investigations training with new recruits. BCN's Loris Alexander was there to learn the training of roles and responsibilities of the rookie responders. A lot of professions require constant training to ensure your skill sets stay sharp, but it takes an even deeper meaning when your job involves saving lives. Their safety is obviously first and foremost in making sure that they uh, are safe when they're putting the fire out, but we also want them to look at uh, any signs or signals that might be uh, um, malicious activity, like uh, multiple points of ignition or the color of smoke or the color of the fire. When you're able to actually come out on the training ground, light something like this and then go in and they'll go in shortly and they'll take a look and you can see the damage that a fire causes, but at the same time you can also see how the area can be preserved. Uh, you probably noticed that we didn't use a whole lot of water on this. We don't need to use a whole lot of water. Um, in a lot of situations, it's just quick burst getting the fire out. It's kind of cool to see firsthand and, and to get some hands-on training with what we're doing. Um, we're learning a lot about fire investigation and different causes and, and different patterns that we're looking for. Um, it's kind of new training. I think the old school mentality is, is you, you go in, you put the wet stuff on the hot stuff, as, as everyone says. Um, but now we're really learning how to look for different patterns, different structures inside that kind of give us clues that we can relay to fire prevention and, and really help us dial in on the cause of the fire. The 12-week course focuses on both firefighting and emergency services training. For Birch City News, I'm Loris Alexander. Thank you, Loris. Now that Lethbridge has a population of, of over 100,000 people, there are some big city problems that come with that distinction. Lethbridge Mayor Chris Spearman spoke at SACPAW Thursday about certain issues the city is facing. Keeping up with growth. Uh, I, I get people complaining about construction all the time. And of course, the more roads we have, the more construction we're going to have. And, uh, you know, the more traffic volume we have, the, the more maintenance we'll have. And certainly until we get those needed uh, supports uh, to deal with the drug issue, until we get people moving into uh, treatment and recovery on a more frequent basis, uh, we'll always have uh, those type of social problems. Interestingly, um, our needle distribution is down by 75 to 80 uh, percent from a, what it was two years ago. Um, the risk is much lower and uh, we're gathering more needles than are being distributed. Mayor Spearman stopped by our studios as well recently and had lots to say on our city's drug prices and affordable housing. Watch that interview with BCN's Paul Arthur coming up later in our show. More than a week after a major snowstorm brought down power lines and transmission towers across the province, about 5,000 Manitoba Hydro customers are still without electricity. That's down from about 50. 3,000 on Saturday. The utility says most of the remaining outages are in rural areas and First Nations communities in central Manitoba and the Interlake region to the north.
There are only three full campaign days left before the federal election, and party leaders are keeping busy. Conservative leader Andrew Scheer kicks things off this morning with an event in Fredericton before heading back to Quebec in the hopes of stealing People's Party leader Maxime Bernier's seat in Beauce. Both NDP leader Jagmeet Singh and Green leader Elizabeth May are spending the day in B.C., each with a number of appearances on Vancouver Island. Liberal leader Justin Trudeau is, facing, is focusing rather on ridings in smaller cities around Toronto. A mix of sun and cloud today, but clearing late this afternoon. And we're also looking at wind gusts up to 70 kilometers per hour. Complete weather details are coming up after the break. Stay with us. Welcome back. Here's a look at our weather highlights for Lethbridge today and tomorrow. A mix of sun and cloud, scattered clouds there. High of 13 degrees and a low of zero degrees today. A high of 10 degrees tomorrow and a low of minus two. But keep in mind, we've got some windy weather too. We've got wind gusts up to 70 kilometers per hour. So that's not fun. Looking ahead to the five day sunshine on Sunday with a high of nine. Lots of sunshine also in the forecast for election day. Monday. If you are getting out to vote, you'll have lots of sun there. Uh, 10 degree high, 14 degree high on Tuesday, lots of sunshine. Wednesday though, we're going to dip down to 5 degrees with a chance of showers and the temperature is going to rise again for Thursday with sunshine in the forecast again. The average high this time of year should be 14 degrees, the average low zero. The highest temperature on this day was in 2003 and it was 25 degrees, nice and balmy. But the low was a minus 17 in 1951. The sun rose this morning just before 8 a.m. It's going to be setting this evening just after 6.30 p.m. The day is getting shorter. Looking to the national forecast there. Victoria and Vancouver are going to be highs of 12 degrees uh, with uh, rain showers there. Mix of sun and cloud up in Edmonton with a high of 13 degrees. High of 11 for Calgary with a mix of sun and cloud as well. Over to the prairies, we've got lots of sunshine in Regina with a high of 14 degrees. It'll be a lovely day there. High of 14 in Saskatoon as well with a bit of scattered clouds. A mix of sun and cloud with some showers though in Winnipeg with a high of 13 degrees over there. Over in the, the uh, east, Toronto, we'll be seeing 12 degrees with the scattered clouds there. Um, mostly cloudy skies in Ottawa with a high of nine and lots of cloud coverage also in Montreal with a high of 10 degrees over there. Looking to the Maritimes of Fredericton, we got rain showers there with a high of 11. Mix of sun and cloud in Halifax with a high of 13. High of 13 also in Charlottetown, but a chance of thunderstorms. And we got thunderstorm watch also in St. John's, Newfoundland with a high of 15 degrees. That's your weather. Up next, Community Calendar. Here's your Bridge City News Community Calendar. Southern Alberta Crime Stoppers is holding their first ever 5K Color Fun Run on Saturday, October 19th from 9 to 11 a.m. at Legacy Regional Park in Lethbridge. All proceeds to go to Southern Alberta Crime Stoppers. For more information about the run and volunteer opportunities, email lcsa1983 at gmail.com or visit Southern Alberta Crime Stoppers Facebook page. Family Centre's Parent Advisory Council and Exhibition Park invite you to come to the Fifth-tastic Boo Bash on Saturday, October 26th from 1 to 4 p.m. at Exhibition Park West Pavilion. Come with your family, dressed up in your best costume, and enjoy crafts, games, a bouncy castle, photo booth, and so much more. There is no admission charges or parking fees. For more information, visit famcentre.ca. The City of Lethbridge's Residential Fall Leaf Collection Program is underway from now to November 15th. Residents can call 311 Monday to Friday between 8 a.m. and 4.30 p.m. to arrange for pickup. Leaves must be put in paper yard waste bags and placed in the area where garbage is normally collected. Paper yard waste bags are available for purchase at retail stores throughout Lethbridge. For more information about the Residential Fall Leaf Collection Program, visit lethbridge.ca or call 311. And that's your Bridge City News Community Calendar. Well, we all have that one drawer in the kitchen full of odds and ends, and of course, it includes loose batteries. Today's daily life hack will give you the ability to instantly tell if the batteries are good or not. 
bounce the batteries to see if they have power. Drop them on a table from about six inches. If they give one small bounce and fall right over, they're good. If they bounce around any more than that, they're dead or on the way out. And that's your daily life hack. Well, if you're looking for something to do this weekend, there's some great movies playing at the Movie Mill. Here's another Movie Mill Minute. The Lion King. Simba looks up to his father, King Mufasa, and takes to heart his own royal destiny on the plains of Africa. But Mufasa's brother, Scar, has plans of his own. The battle for Pride Rock is soon ravaged with betrayal, tragedy, and drama, ultimately resulting in Simba's exile. Simba must learn the true meaning of responsibility and take back the kingdom. You must take your place. The Fighting Preacher. Based on a true story, Preacher Willard Bean becomes the world middleweight boxing champion in 1905. But when Joseph Smith asks him to step away from the limelight and serve a five-year mission in New York, the Bean family packs their bags and travels to the East Coast. Once they arrive, they must choose whether to fight for their right to live there or to love their hostile neighbors. When they prove to be good citizens, we learn to tolerate them and admire them. You're good people. And respect them. And now we love them. Angry Birds 2. Red, Chuck, Bomb, and the rest of their feathered friends are surprised when a green pig suggests that they put aside their differences and unite to fight a common threat. Red is unsure if this could be possible. Are they all capable of change? We need to put aside our differences and work together. <laughs> to save our world from being destroyed. What we really need is a hero. Actually, that position's been filled. And we just recently observed Mental Health Awareness Week, but did you know that there's a clubhouse in Claire's home designed to help those struggling with mental illness to cope and to deal with those off days? I visited the clubhouse and found out that it's unique to anything else in the province. In any given year, one in five people in Canada will personally experience a mental health illness. Leah Prodzik holds up signs that read off some hard statistics about mental illness. Alarming stats like this one. Suicide accounts for 24% of all deaths among 15 to 24 year olds. These signs were on display during an event called Sparta Stomp, a fundraiser to help raise awareness for mental illness and raise funds for Sparta House a clubhouse where many of its members struggle with stats just like this one. The total number of 12 to 19 year olds in Canada at risk for developing depression is a staggering 3.2 million. The clubhouse is located in Claire's home and is the only clubhouse in southern Alberta of its kind. You just have to have a mental illness diagnosis so you don't actually have to be referred. Anybody can pop in and as long as they have a diagnosis they're welcome to be a member. Sparta House is its complete own entity. It's not really something you can find. Executive Director Carrie Dahl explains that it's because most clubhouses designed for members struggling with mental illness are structured and have mental health professionals working within them. Their automatic is, you know, what are your coping skills? What are, you know, how are you handling this? But we are different. We're the opposite. We're just a social recreation environment that, you know, you're having a bad day just because it's a bad day. It's not, you know, because of your illness or how is your illness handling this. So it gives people a chance to just come and be themselves without worrying about um, assessments or the potential of, um, you know, going back into the hospital. Sparta House has 95 members, but on any given day can see 5 to 20 of them coming in to just hang out, play games, socialize, or just chill. Joy is one of them. I try to be as involved as I can here. These people, the other members are, to me, like extended family. Joy has been a member here for the past five years and actually moved to Claire's home from Calgary because of what's offered here. There's more mental health support per capita in Claire's home than anywhere else in the province. The members feel a sense of ownership over Sparta House because it's completely run by members 
for the members. There's always crib going on or people shoot pool. We have a man cave upstairs and um, we involve ourselves quite heavily in the community with volunteer work. Often people with a mental illness, they get looked at as somebody to pity, feel sorry for, or fear, when really the reality is, is that they actually are somebody that should be admired and looked up to, because for the most part, they're held to the same society standards and expectations as everybody else, and they're doing it with this constant battle in their own brain that nobody can see. In the end, Dahl just simply calls her members heroes. They really are. They're amazing. People with a mental illness are really warriors. They are strong and they are not to be feared or to be pitied. They are just somebody that should be as respected as everybody else. For Bridge City News, I'm Jeanette Roche. Affordable housing, an effective drug strategy, and burnt out EMS staff. Those are a few of the topics BCN's Paul Arthur discusses with Lethbridge Mayor Chris Spearman. That interview is coming up right after the break. Stay with us.